Are you in the market for a new laptop? In this video, we're talking about the five things that you should consider when you're looking at products so you can make the best decision for you, rather than just give you some links that may not even be available when you're going to buy. So all that's coming up right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees, and you are watching the 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. If this is your first time to the channel, guys, make sure you subscribe because I release videos two times a week for engineering success. And if you want the 1% Engineer Kit and access to the Facebook group, follow the link in the description and let me know what type of laptop you're looking for. Comment below and I can give you some specific tips. There's lots of laptops out there on the market coming up for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and the Christmas season and it can be a little overwhelming there's so many things out there so many brands so many different specs and all types of things to look at and pay attention to and if you're not exactly sure what this stuff means you will probably have anxiety because you may buy the wrong product first off guys I get this question all the time people say well I am this type of engineer or that type of engineer what type of laptop do you recommend for me and the truth is this guys all these engineering types get bundled into one category when it comes to laptops besides mechanical engineers because mechanicals will be using a program called SolidWorks and that software program is the most graphically intensive the most demanding on a laptop on a computer so these are truly the only engineers that should be looking at powerful gaming laptops and bigger rigs with super video cards and things like this. So for most of you, I just want to say this up front, you don't actually need a super duper beast mode of a laptop, but still engineers, computer scientists, and people in tech type majors, they have this need to get something that is faster than average. So still, I'm going to consider that in this video when we talk about the five things that you should look at, particularly if you want to future proof your laptop, which means have it for about four years or so, which seems to be a pretty common goal when you buy a laptop. It's too expensive to buy one every two years or so. I mean, come on guys, we're already buying smartphones every two years that are about $1,000. The last thing you need is for your laptop to be super slow after just two years. So without further ado guys, let's jump right into aspect number one, which is the CPU. When you're looking at laptops, this is hands down the most important thing. CPU is the brain, the central processing unit of your laptop and it controls everything. Most CPUs are made by Intel, so you'll see something like i3, 5, and 7. Clearly the i7 is better than the 5 and the 3. And you'll also see something like 3.2 gigahertz. This is the clock speed. This is the amount of calculations per second that CPU is able to do, so clearly a higher number is better. Don't get too tripped up if you're comparing i3s to i7s because i7s have four cores in their CPU, whereas a three only has two. So even if you have a higher clock speed, it doesn't necessarily mean that that processor is capable of doing more things. So you have to look at a couple other variables like start with i7. I would really only look at i7s if I was you. And then look at the other specs like clock speed and you'll see two other things about CPU. You will probably see something about turbo boosting and all that really is an Intel feature that allows for additional voltage to be pumped into your CPU when you actually need it and also less voltage to keep it cool when you don't actually need it. And then hyperthreading is another term that you may see when looking at a CPU and all that means is it turns your cores into two logical cores so it tricks your computer from thinking there's just one calculation point to two calculation points. So it doesn't really matter too much, but typically on an i7, what that means is operating as if there are eight cores. So if you see hyperthreading, it's a good thing, but not all softwares, not all programs can actually use more than four cores. So don't worry about this too much, but it is a good thing if you see it. The second thing to look at is the RAM or the random access memory or the memory, not to be confused by the hard drive storage space. A lot of people mix up the two. Memory, when it comes to computers, is not storage, is not actually the files that you will save. It's its ability to multitask. That's what RAM is. If the CPU is like the brain, the RAM is like your arm. So the more RAM that you have, the more ability you have to do more tasks at once. The thing that can consider here is DDR3 versus DDR4 RAM. And when it comes to the more advanced DDR4 RAM, truly what you're only getting is a lower voltage. So it runs cooler and a little bit better. So therefore don't get too caught up in looking at DD4 RAM because something like a cheaper 
16 gigs of DDR3 RAM is actually gonna be better than just eight gigs of DDR4 RAM. So have that in mind, guys. I highly suggest to get DDR3 RAM as much as you can because RAM is so cost effective. If you want to switch it out later, after a year or two, you're looking for a little bit of a boost for a small amount of money, that's what you would upgrade. So just go with DDR3, guys. And aspect number three is the hard drive options. The best combinations for laptops today is a two hard drive setup where you have a solid state drive and SSD as your primary drive. And that will work in unison with a bigger storage drive, something like a one or two terabyte hard drive. And how this works is you'll have your SSD with your operating system and all your programs, all your softwares on this one. So this is where you will run things. It'll be a lot faster this way if you have all your programs on this SSD. And then the other hard drive, the bigger, more clunky, more cost effective non SSD drive. This is where you keep your course projects, your music, your videos, your photos, everything else. That is your storage drive. So it doesn't have to be as fast. You're not actually keeping your programs there. You're not actually keeping your OS there. So this is the best setup for you. So definitely look at laptops that have this setup because if you just have an SSD which is still pretty good what happens is you end up paying way more money for something like a half terabyte or even a full terabyte SSD I haven't even seen those so if you don't get this combo set up you're going to be restricting your amount of storage space and probably filling up your SSD too early. And you definitely don't want a laptop today with no SSD. I would not even consider that, guys. Aspect number four is the video card. And yes, I have intentionally kept this at the latter end of the list because it's just not that important unless you are a mechanical engineer or unless you are a gamer in your spare time or if you plan to do lots and lots of 3D rendering type stuff. Maybe some civil engineers or architects out there will be using these types of platforms. But most engineers just need a normal laptop. So you may not even need a video card in your laptop but the best way to tell if it has a video card you will see something like nvidia geforce and then three numbers usually the modern laptops are about the 800 to 900 series for the geforce video cards so that's how you know if there's even a video card in there and just like intel for the cpu situation nvidia pretty much has a stranglehold on the market i don't really see other things beyond nvidia's out there but i wouldn't worry too much about what type of video card you're going to be getting unless again you're going to be doing some insane gaming or crazy high-end solid work stuff then you want to get a higher number on that video card that three digit number you probably want to look at a 900 series video card but beyond that guys i wouldn't worry about it too much but for you engineers who want to make sure you have a future proof for your laptop just make sure you get some sort of video card and you're not rolling with a situation that is onboard video meaning no video card and aspect number five is size and weight and this comes down to a preferential and a situational type of thing for you for example, if you're gonna be doing a lot of walking, if you're on a big campus, or if you're gonna be riding your bike to class and things like this, you probably do not want a large laptop. I wouldn't even suggest that you get a 15 inch, get the smaller 13 inch, maybe look at a Chromebook, maybe look at a Surface, because portability is everything when you're a student, guys. Convenience and ease is very important because you will be reluctant to even take your laptop out of your dorm, wherever you live, out of your core area, if you have a big, inconvenient laptop. So that is a really important thing for you to consider and likewise, say you're someone who loves to watch movies and you don't even want to have a TV in college. You're just going to use your laptop as your primary media device and you highly enjoy Netflix or watching YouTube like myself. Maybe you should consider a bigger screen like a 15 or even a 17 inch laptop. And also maybe you drive to class and you don't have to walk. You don't have to ride the bike. Maybe you can actually justify a 17 inch laptop. You have to consider what you like, your personal situation, the campus commute environment for yourself and things like this. And finally, weight is important too because anything over five pounds guys is a super heavy laptop so again if you're going to be toting it around if you're going to be carrying it on the bike and things like this get lighter get smaller so it makes it so much easier to use so much more convenient for you so you don't actually just leave it in your room and then the laptop becomes pointless so i hope this video helped you be able to choose a laptop for yourself a little bit better it's sort of a teach you how to fish instead of giving you a fish type of approach this way you can actually make the right decision for you and choose the best product for your engineering future. And if you enjoyed this video, guys, consider subscribing because I release videos two times a week for engineering success. Check out another video, guys. There'll be one linked up in the credits. And as always, thanks for watching the 1% Engineer Show and stay hungry on your quest to become a 1% engineer. Cheers.